How's it going guys? I'm Josh and I am in New Orleans right now. I'm here for the month so that should explain the tacky art behind me in this Airbnb and I visited the Great Smoky Mountains on my way here road tripping down which is my 23rd US National Park ever. Now the reason why I'm flexing so hard right here is because I want to talk today about how to make travel happen both financially speaking and logistically because there is so much that goes into planning a good trip and I've had the fortunate opportunity to travel quite a bit and you guys ask me this question all the time so it's time I made a video on the matter. But first, let's revel in this little video I made on my second day here. Enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Today's video is brought to you by Storyblocks, a stock video platform with a huge library full of high quality B-roll footage, motion backgrounds, as well as After Effects templates. I actually used a bunch of those After Effects transitions and title sequences for the video you just saw, but more on them later. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. I'm gonna cover seven tips for figuring out your trip and how to do it. Starting off with number one, let's talk about budgeting. You're gonna experience limitations when you're figuring out your trip, most likely in time and or money. So these have huge effects on how far you're willing to go and how long you can take to get out there. So if you've got no time and no money, you might wanna stick local, do a day trip, weekend trip. If you have lots of time and no money, then you can do lots of ground transportation and go a little further out. Think trains, road trips, and buses. Got lots of money, no time. You might want to just fly somewhere to keep things quick. And if you have lots of time and lots of money, do it all. Go wherever you want in the world is your oyster. My personal favorite way to travel is undoubtedly the road trip. So I always think about where I have cars available to me and then what is a reasonable distance to travel from that starting point. So my parents have a car in Virginia that I can use, might be willing to go 10 hours out from there in any direction. Or if you have friends that live in different states, which I'm lucky enough to have, where can you start from there? You have all these new base points then and you can start formulating a trip based on all of that. Tip number two, keep it frugal. A lot of people view traveling as an excuse to live indulgently, spending lots of money, but personally, I would much rather take four $250 trips than one $1,000 trip. So I'm always looking for ways to keep costs down and the travel's going. So my favorite thing to do is just cooking my own meals rather than eating out. So to do that, I'll stay in Airbnbs that have kitchens. I'll bring sandwich stuff so I can cook sandwiches. And when I camp, we're cooking almost every single meal ourselves. Uh, having a propane stove is totally clutch for that. Also, if you drink, bars are such an easy way to spend huge amounts of money. Pre-gaming and dive bars are part of a lifestyle. And also, when you're living at home, I like to live below my means just because I'd rather spend that money on the road. Number three, let's talk about accommodations. So for accommodations, I can't recommend Airbnbs enough because oftentimes I'm paying less than I would for a crappy motel for a hotel quality spot. I like to do private rooms because I get to meet locals who host and it's always a really cool experience that is super, super affordable and just nice. And if you wanna try out Airbnb, you can use my code right here at this link and you'll get $40 off on your first day. I've been doing this since I started traveling and it's just the best way to do it. Alternatively, camping is also a phenomenal option. In the US National Parks, you're paying $15 a night for a campground. So if you've got a group of three people, that's five bucks a night for accommodations. So, so nice and just what a great experience. I personally like to do about two or three nights of camping on my trips 
and then every fourth night, stay in an Airbnb when we need to shower, and then go back to the dirt floor. Hostels are also a great option in places that have good ones. Unfortunately, the US isn't great on the hostel scene, but Europe and Asia definitely are. I do my hostel research and booking on hostelworld.com. And also, if you're traveling for an extended period of time, I highly recommend either subletting your room out or using Airbnb, because it brings in a lot of extra money when you're away. So right now, I have a subletter in my New York City room, which actually makes this six week trip I'm on way more feasible. I actually think I'm breaking even. Another neat thing I recently learned about is called home swapping, and there's this whole online community of people that actually swap homes with each other in different cities, and that's a really cool alternative to the Airbnb being your room out situation because there's mutually assured destruction. If they mess up your crap, you can mess up theirs, which equals a lot of trust, and I love that. There are a couple different home swapping sites, and I'll link them all down below. Tip number four, travel in groups. To keep costs down, squatting up is definitely a great way to do things because there are a lot of fixed costs involved in traveling, like national park entry fees, accommodations, random food things that you need but have to buy way too much of, etc., etc. Having a group makes things way cheaper because you're splitting everything. It's also great if you want to take a road trip with friends who have cars in different states. I'm fortunate enough to have friends who live in California who've made a lot of really awesome road trips possible that wouldn't have been otherwise because Rental cars are so unbelievably expensive and add so much cost to a trip, I would always rather take a car that someone owns, even if we have to go a little out of our way to get it. One great solution to the car issue is ride sharing. If you're in Europe, there's a massive network of ride sharing websites like blahblahcar.com, and it's really cool because it's dirt cheap. You get a ride almost usually directly to the place you want to go, and you're going to meet a local doing it, so it's a very cool process. Highly recommend it. It's such a bummer that the US doesn't have a great infrastructure of this, hopefully soon. Tip number five, let's talk about timing. So timing has a huge effect on where and when you go places. Do you want to deal with insanely hot, insanely cold weather, and how crowded do you want the place to be? So for example, with national parks, there's definitely an on-season time when the weather is nicest and the trees are most beautiful, but it's also going to be the most crowded. Inversely, if you go off season, it might be miserably cold, but it's going to be pretty empty. So you have to weigh out these different aspects. Maybe you want to go slightly off season so the weather's still good, yet it's not going to be as crowded. That's usually the way I like to do my trips anywhere I go because it's not fun when things are crowded, except dance floors. Always like a crowded dance floor. As far as accommodations go, if you've got a good hostel circuit nearby, then that's totally fine to figure out day of. But if you're doing Airbnb, there's a good chance if you wait till the night of that you're going to end up paying more for a crappy hotel or motel than you would to get a decent quality Airbnb. So I usually try and get those at least a few days in advance. Number six, let's talk logistics. I like to use Google My Maps when I'm figuring out general places I might want to go someday. So I've just got a map full of some spots I want to hit. And then when a road trip starts to come together, I start looking at what's nearby, what would make for a reasonable route. And then I go on to roadtrippers.com, which is a phenomenal tool for planning out a route. You get to put in all the locations you want to hit. It tells you the most efficient route, how long each stop is going to take. And there's a lot of other gimmicky stuff on the platform. They try to sell you on hotels and all that. Ignore that and ignore all the tourist attractions, but do take advantage of the routing as well as the random nature recommendations it has, because it's got a couple of good ones. And last tip number seven, figuring out stuff to do once you get there. So Reddit is an incredible resource. I love r slash solo travel and just going to local communities reddits for recommendations on things to do. I also love just going up to locals that think look cool and asking them for recommendations on stuff because usually they're very generous and give you sick tips that you can't find online too easily. In Montreal, I once did a trip entirely based on that. We didn't do any research. We just asked locals to give us an index card of like two to four recommendations. We did all of them and honestly one of the coolest trips I've had. Everything really panned out and we had some weird, weird experiences. Finally, Cool Cousin is a really neat app where locals make guides to the city and once you find someone with good taste, you can just follow along for all their tips. I checked out the New York scene and actually found a number of locals with, I think, pretty good tips. So much respect to that. And if you need a food map or a drinking map in New York City, hit me up. I'll take care of you guys. And that just about sums up these general travel tips. If there's anything more specific you'd like me to dig into, please leave a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to share. Maybe make some follow-up videos. Now for those of you that want professional quality footage from all over the world without footing the bill of traveling to these exotic locations, Storyblocks is an awesome economical option for some beautiful stock footage. 
Now they've got a huge library of HD and 4K footage as well as After Effects templates and motion backgrounds that they are constantly adding to. So for the New Orleans edit you saw earlier in this video, I used a bunch of After Effects templates for transitions as well as titles that I found on the platform as well as I'll be using some Instagram story templates I found. So whole wide range of phenomenal options to assist your creative process. Their library is also all royalty free, meaning you can use their clips for commercial purposes or for a YouTube video, anything they've got you covered. And on top of all of that, for one low cost, you gain access to infinite downloads from their platform, meaning they'll help you finish your project in no time. So definitely check them out with the link in the description down below. And that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video and I will see you eventually. I'm gonna go skate.